Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for joining me today. Today's video is going to be a paint review, which I have a ton on here. If you guys have looked at my video library, you know, I've done a lot of paint reviews. They actually are one of my favorite things to do. I'm always looking for new paints, paints I haven't tried to go ahead and review for myself as well as you. So today we're gonna to be doing the Bare Chalk Paint Review. I've never used this paint before, and to be honest with you, I've heard good, I've heard bad. So today I'm going to go ahead and determine for myself and for you guys what I think of it. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so we're in Home Depot. I'm down the aisle where they carry the bare chalk paint. I've never bought this before, so it's kind of a new experience. They only make certain colors and I would just went to the counter to have her make a color for me. And she's like, oh no, we only make certain colors. And so she gave me the pamphlet and I chose from there. So this is a whole new fit here. It comes in a quart and it comes as a white base or they have a deep base. So you get to choose depending on if you're obviously going with darker colors or lighter. It runs $20.38 and they're gonna go ahead and mix the color, which I'm not gonna reveal until the actual next part of the video. So as you guys know, in all my review videos, I pretty much use the same process and the same tools. For each video, I use my Klingon F50 synthetic brush and I'm using a crown molding piece that was cut up into 12 inch sections that I've used for all of my videos. This way, the only thing that's changing is the paint product and it gives me a really true idea since I haven't changed anything else about the product itself. So let's talk about the product for just a minute. So this quart here runs at my Home Depot, it was $20.38 for the quart. They didn't come in any other sizes. It is a two-step paint process, which means it does need to be sealed. Bear does have a wax that you can use. I don't use wax very often, so my choice would be a water-based top coat, which is fine to use over this as well. Um, the other thing about it is it comes in 45 colors and that is it, which I didn't know. I thought you could basically walk up and say, I want this bare color. Doesn't quite work that way. They do, and I wish I had taken it, but I didn't. They had a color card, but I'll go ahead and pop that up here on screen. They do have a very wide variety of colors to choose from, so that is also a nice thing. 45 colors is a decent paint color line. So um, let's see, what else? Oh, dry time is one hour and recoat is two hours, which is pretty standard amongst furniture paint. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. As usual, I'm gonna use my Klingon F50 brush, my much loved, as you can tell. Uh, my 12 inch board from Home Depot, this is just crown molding. You can get these cut into pieces and that's what I do for my review videos. And then our paint, star of the show, which is the bare chalk decorative paint. I got the color Grecian Garden, Garland, Grecian Garland, sorry. Let's go ahead and pop this open and see what it really looks like. It looked like a sagey minty green to me on the color card and it's really pretty. Uh, it's a very popular color right now and since I do plan on painting a piece of furniture with this, I wanted something that I knew would be a good seller but show up on camera as well and whites just don't typically show up on camera. I got this a few days ago. It was shaken at the store but I'm gonna go ahead and just give it a light stir to make sure everything has not settled on the bottom and it's really stirred up well. Now typically chalk paint is a thick consistency or thicker and this actually isn't too terribly bad so uh, I wouldn't say it's thick I would say it's kind of in the middle uh, and it's not super thin either. So I'm going to go ahead and take this stick out wipe it off show you guys up close what the color really looks like so you can get a really good capture. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and dip into our paint. You don't wanna load up too terribly much in the beginning. I usually go about quarter to half of my paintbrush and I just go ahead and figure out if that's enough, dip in if I need more. Less is always better in the beginning. Too much paint can be problematic for your final finish and it's easier to add more paint than sometimes it is to take away. So I like to start on the more conservative side and as you can see, I'm just kind of going over the board to get coverage, not try trying to cover the entire thing, knowing I'm gonna have some peek through and knowing when to put my brush down and stop working it. If you overwork it too much, that's where you can start to have issues with your finish, see brush strokes and start to feel drag, which I don't feel at all with this first coat going down. We're gonna go ahead and let this set up for about an hour, 
come back and I'll show you the first coat. Okay, I always like to show you guys from this angle here. I flipped the camera because I get really good light and I really want to show you case how it looks after the first coat. So here it is. I'm gonna get in really close so you guys can see and turn it on an angle so you can really see. There is some peek through in certain areas, which is to be expected. Um, I usually do about two and sometimes three coats depending on what it is I'm trying to cover and what colors I'm using. So coverage is really, really good. Um, the way it feels, it's a little smoother, I would say, than most chalk paints. Um, it feels like there's a little bit, but not much. I'm actually impressed with how it feels for a chalk style paint. Usually they're a little gritty or minerally feeling. This one doesn't feel like it at all. I am not gonna do anything in between coats and I'm also not going to, like I said, use my Mr. Bottle or anything. I really wanna see how this performs on its own without any assistance. So it's been an hour. Let's go ahead and recoat. Recoat time is two hours, but we are extremely warm here in California. This is a very small piece. So if I were doing a piece of furniture, I would yield the two hour recoat time, but because this is so small and we're really warm here today, I'm gonna go ahead. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and put our second coat on. I do load up a little bit heavier on the paint for the second coat, just because sometimes now that you have a first coat down, that second coat can tend to sometimes have a little bit of a drag to it or pull. So I load up a little bit heavier on the paint so that I don't get that. Now what I will recommend to you is if you start to feel that, and typically you can feel it, then you wanna stop working that area and put your brush down and realize that you might need to go back with another coat after this. Now I will say I don't feel that drag or that pull putting my second coat on. It's going on very, very nicely. So for the most part, what I'm pointing out here is there was a certain area where I could feel it start to drag a little bit, which just meant I needed to stop working my piece and move on. If I need to get more coverage, I'll just come back and do a little touch up third coat on that. All right, we're gonna go ahead and let that set up about another hour and I will come back and show you that finished second coat. All right, you guys, second coat is all dry. Let me just go ahead and get right to it and show you. Here it is, really up close. Really, really nice. First of all, I have to say I love the color. Came out exactly like I thought it would when I picked it out from the color swatch. So that's always good. The coverage is really good. I honestly, I missed one little spot, like right there you can see in the groove, but that was me that missed the spot. The coverage is excellent. Um, it's very, very smooth for a chalk finish type paint. Now, this does have to be sealed. They say you can use their wax, as I mentioned earlier. I don't usually use wax for my protective top coats, so I'm gonna go ahead. I actually have my spray gun already loaded up with some water-based poly, so I am gonna go ahead and top coat this just to see how it looks, and I'll pop back on and show you the final product. Okay, so the bottom line is, you probably wanna know, would I recommend this paint? Well, I wouldn't not recommend it yet at this point. I think it's a little too early for me to make that decision and tell you guys until I get it on a piece of furniture. I don't think it's a bad paint. I feel like my experience brushing it on wasn't bad, but I need to delve into it a little more and decide if it's a paint that I really like. So stay tuned for that next video. I am gonna go ahead and try this again on a piece of furniture because I truly believe that is one of the only ways when you're dealing with a paint product to test it out and see if you really like it. Painting a 12 inch board is great for this quick review to let you guys know my initial thoughts on it, but painting a piece of furniture, that's what I do. So it's going to give me a better idea of the entire painting process. And like I said, because I spray, I really wanna check this out and see how it sprays as well. All right, you guys, that is it. We are at the end of the video. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you are not subscribed to my channel, make sure you go ahead and hit that subscribe button so that you can get all of my latest videos once they're released and become a part of my YouTube community, which helps support my channel and keep me going. I hope this video was helpful for you guys today and you enjoyed watching. Thank you again, and I'll catch you on the next video.